Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Tonight, we're going to take a look at potatoes. This is a noob's guide to planting and harvesting potatoes. Now, why is this separate from the regular harvesting and planting guide? Because potatoes require their own set of equipment, and they have a, so a couple things that are just a little bit different. Um, so let's take a look real quick. Everything you see here, these three pieces of equipment are what you're going to need. We've got a planter, which uh, the planter runs about $22,000 for the small one. Then we have what's called a cutter. This is going to cut the tops. We have to remove the tops when the potatoes are ready to harvest. And then last but not least, we have the actual harvester itself. Um, there's a couple different models available. Um, you have this regular tractor pull behind. Um, this has a 110 horsepower requirement. This tractor that I'm using has 120 horsepower. So theoretically, this tractor should be able to pull this harvester. However, to be honest with you, this thing is freaking huge. You're going to be better off using something more of like a tier six tractor. These are, I think these are tier four or five, these Massey Ferguson's. Um, the 7000 series is a tier six tractor. So this is going to be more appropriately sized to pull a harvester like that. Um, now, you'll notice on this tractor setup, I've got it cut, uh, set up, and we'll get to this when we go to do harvesting. I have the cutter on the front and the harvester on the back, but that doesn't really do you any good because this cutter cuts four rows and the harvester only collects two rows. So you're almost better off just running the cutter first and then coming back later and using the harvester. So, you know, you cut it first and then come back with the harvester after you're done cutting because you can cut at it like 14, 15 miles an hour. You can cut pretty quick. And then when you're done cutting, just come back and harvest it. It's not really worth running both. Because if I put this on, that takes like 60 or 70 horsepower. And then this takes 110. That automatically raises your needs to about 170 horsepower. <laughs> um, so then you have to ha you must have a bigger tractor like this Massey Ferguson to run the setup. But, you know, I would just honestly run them separately um, and still use this big Massey. <laughs> So there's an, an initial investment of about, let's see, 20000 for the small one. Let's take a look real quick here. Uh, if we go under sewing machines, we can see the small potato sewer. That's 21000 plus 112 plus 9. So 21 plus 9 is going to be 30 plus 112. So we have $142,000 plus the tractor um, to get into potatoes. Now, if you want to get real fancy, uh, we have the Grim, Grimmy Harvester, the full harvester. It cuts and harvests. This guy is a godsend when you're doing potatoes because it takes so long to do potatoes. Uh, but this thing's also half a million dollars. So even leasing it is like $50,000. Let's take a look real quick here. You're not going to get your money back if you lease it. I'll tell you that much. Unless you have a really monsterly huge field. Yeah, $34,000 to lease. It's not worth leasing. If you can afford to buy one and then just use it on your farm and you're always doing potatoes, this is worthwhile. But otherwise, if you lease it, unless you have, like I said, a really giant field, you're probably not going to. Even then, the other issue is it costs an additional probably ten or $15,000 an hour to rent. So each hour that you use it, that cost goes up. So you better have a lot of freaking potatoes to cover it. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. So that's one of the issues that we run into potatoes. You're almost better off using, even though it's a lot slower, you're almost better off using the smaller equipment and just buying it outright. Um, now, for cedars, that's a little bit different. We'll talk about the bigger cedar, too. Um, so, anyway. Here we have a DLC. Part of the Ropa DLC includes this upgraded um, potato harvester. It's got a little bit more capacity. It does require more horsepower. I don't know if it's really worth the extra money and the bigger tractor that you have to use to run it. Um, to be honest with you, it's probably not. It's kind of does the exact same thing. I think, does it do four rows? No, this thing only does two rows too. So really you don't, you don't get any benefits aside from slighter, larger capacity in the holding bin. So I mean, you have to unload it less, but it's only like a thousand less. I mean, it's not, or a thousand more. It doesn't really give you much of a benefit. So to be honest with you, between the Ropa and the Gr the Grimmy, I mean, the Grimmy is probably the better, the better bet, unless you really are, are sold on Ropa equipment. <laughs> There's really no reason to buy that. So anyway, that's from the the uh, Ropa DLC. I just wanted to point that out if you have the DLC. But in general, this guy's just fine. So um, 
So the first thing we're going to do is seed the fields. Now, one of the things that's different with potatoes is that once you've seeded a field with potatoes, because you're basically just planting potatoes, you're not planting seed, you're actually planting physical potatoes, um, it's expensive the first time because you have to buy the potatoes to put into the ground, and that you, you need a lot of potatoes. Um, but once you've gotten a field full of potatoes and they're growing and you get another, you get a harvest out of them, you're going to save back an, a small amount of potatoes to replant that field. So you, once you've seeded it, done it once, you never have to do it again. You can always keep potatoes from the harvest and put them in. So the important thing to do, and this is what I'm trying to get at, you want to remember how many seeds you use on a certain field. You might even have to start like writing stuff down, but like, Let's say it takes 6,000 uh, liters of potatoes to plant this field. Make sure that after the harvest is done, you save back 6,000 liters so that you can replant the field. But that way you know, hey, this is a 6,000 liter field, and I need to save out of the maybe 100,000 liters that I get, I need to save 6,000 of those to replant the field and get you know the, the seed back into the field. But you don't have to buy potatoes because you're just getting them from your harvest. So that's pretty cool. It's different than any of the other crops in the game except for... Got to think about that. Does sugarcane do that? I think with sugarcane you can... Well, sugarcane grows back again. So we'll talk about sugarcane in a different video. But um, anyway, when you're using the small cedar and you got a small tractor, you're going to want to use a weight on the front. And the reason why is because this cedar actually sits on the back of the tractor and so it puts its weight on the back of the tractor, and the tractor is going to try to buck left and right while you're seeding. Um, one of the things to note is that on this small seeder, you don't get fertilizer. All you get is is your uh, planting ability. So uh, I'm going to use the larger seeder just to save time, uh, but this is not a bad deal at $21,000. So let's go ahead and look at the bigger seeder. Here we are back at the shop. I have a larger tractor. Now, you don't really have to have a huge tractor to run the seeder. In fact, let's take a look. Sewing machines. And here we have the potato sower, the large one. This is the GL860, runs at about $60,000. This one both fertilizes and plants. It requires a 170 horsepower tractor. That's a, actually, actually is a fairly large tractor. Now, this guy is a trailer behind type um, thing. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, use the hitch. The, the, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't use your three-point connector. So you don't necessarily have to run a weight on this. But I'm going to show you something here. This has a capacity for... Um, how many potatoes? For one load, we're going to need doesn't 9,000. So here's where it's a little different than a regular cedar. We have to buy nine, actually 10 packets of potatoes to fill it up. But I'm going to actually just buy, we're going to buy three for now. I'm going to see if the 3,000 is enough to do our field. If it's not, we'll keep coming back and buying it. But we need to find out an exact amount. So there's three. And then we're going to buy some fertilizer. I buy two bags of fertilizer because once again this cedar will also fertilize at the same time that saves us a step later on we don't have to put down extra fertilizer um, we'll have to we'll have to do two more stages but at least we have one stage done so um, let's go ahead and fill this guy up so we bought the seed we're gonna pull up next to it and fill it up just like we do the, the normal cedars come on come on Oh, I, I'm a dummy. Uh, you need liquid fertilizer. I, I bought solid fertilizer. I wasn't thinking. So we'll do that in a second. So by the uh, once again, the fertilizer needs to be the liquid fertilizer. I'm sorry. I bought solid fertilizer. Don't make the same mistake as dumb, dumb Arthur. All right. So um, here we go. Here's the second part. So as you can see, you need a lot of potatoes to plant a field. And these are going to run out. We're probably going to have to come back and buy a lot more. But we're, we'll try to remember how much we've planted. And we're going to buy, while, he's, while it's filling up, we're going to buy two of those big tanks of fluid liquid fertilizer. There we go. And we'll fill this up. Let's see how many liters it holds, because it didn't tell us. I'm guesstimating 800. Yep, 800 liters. So I think each one of those is 1,000. So maybe maybe it's 2,000. Let's take a look. 2,000. Okay. So we really only needed one of those. Um, that'll fill it up two and a half times. You can see there the potatoes are in the back. And uh, we do have a large tractor here. Um, but you'll see what happens. This is a pretty big cedar, actually. It's not... Let's go ahead and unfold this. Yeah. 
and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it down. I think we're going to run out of seed pretty fast, you'll see. I'm going to turn the cedar on, and I'm going to lower it, and we basically just plant like a normal cedar. So we're going to pull forward, and we're going to get stuck on the harvester there. I'll have to move it. There we go. Whack it out of the way. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's how you seed the fields. And you can see how fast the seed amount's going down. I think we're probably going to need, need at least one more refill on this. Um, the fertilizer goes down a lot slower. I'm going to go ahead and run this, and we will get the field planted here, and then I'll come back and catch up with you as soon as I'm done planting. So I'll see you in a minute, and I'll let you know the final total of seed that we've used, and we'll remember that for the harvest. All right, I'm coming to the end of the plant, and it took about 2,600 liters of potatoes. I'd say save back 3,000, fill up the cedar, do the planting, and then sell the rest, you know. Uh, and you can use, we'll, we'll, we'll go over that towards the end. We can use a bucket loader to load up potatoes, or we can use the harvester to dump it into here. Whatever you want, man, however you want to do it. So we're done with this. We're going to fold it up. And let's see, go into fold mode. There we go. And we're going to let these potatoes grow. So I'm going to go off field here. And I have a one mod that I use. I try to not use any mods. I know people are going to be like, well, you could use this mod. Right, you're right. Uh, I don't use mods for these videos because I'm assuming that people might be on the console or they might be on the Nintendo Switch where they don't have access to mods. So I try to do most of my videos mod free. Um, once in a while, I'll show DLC equipment, but there is one mod that I use, and it is a fast-forward time mod um, available from modhub.us. So we're going to let these potatoes grow. Now, I am not doing um, any kind of... Um, oh, all right, fine. Uh, I, I'm, there's the first stage. That's what it looks like. I'm not doing any kind of fertilization. You would want to fertilize them again at this point, and then maybe one more time. You could probably weed them at this point and then do spray-on fertilizer after that thank you seth and um seth is my son he got me a glass of ice water so we'll go through the different stages there's stage two now stage three looks like it's done you'll see it and be like oh they're ready but they're not <laughs> they're gonna be ready in the middle of the night that's gonna be a problem let's see what happens there we go there's stage three they don't look like they're ready never mind and the plants will die, and that'll be stage four. Great spinnery. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, and I don't think they're ready yet. I think this is still pre... There's five stages of growth, which is weird. Most of the, the crops have four, but these have five. So if we go to our map and we look at uh, field number 21, we look at the growth, they're still growing. So we have actually like five stages and then they go to ready to harvest and instead of going yellow they're going to go red which means we can remove the top so you'll see them they'll actually look dead um now if you let them go too long they will i think they do rot maybe but maybe not i've never actually run potatoes that long that they just sat in the field but they may rot it's gonna be like morning before they're ready they may catch up here nope so we're just gonna run it around there they're ready now we're gonna run it around till tomorrow morning there, 7 o'clock in the morning. It's going to rain today. Need to harvest before it rains. Um, so you'll see here they say ready to be topped. I think they might just stay like that. I'm not sure. We, they may not go bad. So let's go ahead and grab our topper and get that part done. Um, you can run the topper on the front or the back of the tractor. Um, honestly, probably easier on the back. Let's go ahead and drop this off. That's not what I wanted. I want to do this, and we're going to... Yep, there we go. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and turn this guy on. So, And I'll lower it, and we're going to start cutting. And you'll see here we can run pretty fast while we're doing this. So it's like 9 kilometers, 9 miles an hour. And that's it. So there's the, stopping, the, the topping phase of our production. And that just cuts the tops off the potatoes and gets them ready to harvest. All right, so I've got my little tractor, and we're going to try this out. I've never done a tractor this small with a potato harvester, but I'm saying it can work, so I better prove the point, right? Let's go ahead and unfold this unit, uh, which is that button. There we go. 
Uh, let's go ahead and start harvesting. So I'm going to turn the guy on. Put it down on the ground, and we will start harvesting now. There we go. So you're going to run along side here. And you can see it's picking up. It's a really narrow stream. You can only get two rows at a time. So, and it's kind of hard to see. And of course, I'm getting stuck on everything I've got parked on the side of the field here. So we're going to make a mess. But um, in reality, you probably shouldn't park your stuff so close to the field so that you can get around this stuff. But Anyway, I'm going to have to miss some potatoes, and that really throws me off. You guys know how anal about things I can get. Um, well, there we go. I'll continue on. I'll have to go back and get those when we move that stuff out of the way. But that's the smooth operation of this device. You can see here it's collected in one run. It collects about 2,000 potatoes. And there's quite a bit of work. We'll get that stuff on the way back. And then we raise it at the end of the field. And we make a big U-turn. This tractor obviously does have enough power to do this. Uh, we're not having any issues. Um, ignore that pile there. Pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> that comes later. I'm going to put this thing down. And we'll continue on. And so I'm going to go ahead and keep harvesting with this guy. We'll fill it up and figure out how to unload it into the truck. And we'll also take a look at the big harvester that's working over there on the other side uh, in just a couple minutes here. So I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this, and I will see you guys in just a minute. All right, so we're going to run the big harvester for a couple minutes so you guys can see that operation go. First thing we need to do is unfold this huge thing. And it is huge. I'm letting that other guy do the topping on that end of the field while we work on this end. Um, so we're having like a little, what do you call that, uh, like a continuity error, <laughs> but it's okay. Life will go on. Okay, so this guy, you can raise and lower this, the harvester, you can see the front, I can raise and lower it. And then uh, this one tops and harvests at the same time. Now we're going to have an issue here with this truck parked here because I'm going to run into it. I, think, I don't think we can put that f pipe up. It doesn't really have a pipe, so Let's see if I can... Nope, there's no pipe. So we're going to just hit the truck. We can collect a lot. You, you can harvest a lot faster with this device. Um, I do see a problem, though. It looks like, no, this should fit over the top of that tipper. We'll be, able to get, we'll be able to get the product in. Both of these should be able to get this into that tipper. Uh, why did I rent that big truck and the big tipper? Well, potatoes give you a lot of yield per field. So you can see here, in this one pass, we've collected enough to refill our cedar. So what we might want to do here is... I might want to take this and dump, make a pile of potatoes over here that are 3,000 deep. Um, and uh, so we'll do that. Now, you, there's a force dump command. I think it's Control-I on the computer. And you can see here it forces the potatoes to dump out on the field in a pile. And then we'll use a front loader to scoop them in. You could also put them in a tipper and then dump them on the ground when you're ready to use them so they're not just sitting out. But that's, you know, I mean, whatever you want to do. But that's how I do it. I just dump them on the ground. And then we'll use a tipper to load them in. I'll show you how to do that too. So, um, so I'm going to continue harvesting here, and uh, we'll use we'll use this to harvest some of the field, and then the other guy to harvest the other part of it. So we've saved back our potatoes for this field, and so now we know we have enough saved um, to plant it again. So that's pretty cool. Okay, one thing I'm going to recommend, and I, as I'm doing these, I forgot uh, to tell you this: when you are running this harvester. You pick it when you pick a field to make potatoes. First of all, don't pick too big of a field. Obviously, especially if you're using this piece of equipment, if you make a giant field, you're going to have a very hard time getting the best price for your potatoes because what's going to happen is, after two or three trailer loads, you're going to be so um, you, the market. What happens is, as you sell the potatoes, the price of the potatoes goes down each time you you know go to the shop to sell them. Um, so if you're like on a third or fourth trailer load. The, the potatoes are going to be worth almost nothing. So you want to keep the field size to maybe like this size, I would say, is probably actually a very decent sized field for potatoes. You're not going to get so many that you're going to have like five truckloads. We'll probably get maybe one one truckload or two truckloads off, which is perfect. The other option, if you want to do a ton of potatoes on a huge field, is to try to always use the train. So on this map, which is the default Goldcrest map, and also on Estancia Lapacho, which is the... Um, the DLC map um, for the Platinum Edition. Um, 
they have trains on them that go to a mill that um, you can you know dump these potatoes in and then take the train to the mill and dump all of the potatoes at once. And even though the price might be a little lower at the mill, um, it's going to be... And I'll show you how to do that here. We're going to actually do that in... Okay, I just filled up. We're going to do that here to show you how to use the train. The reason why I would suggest using the train is because the train holds like 500,000 liters of potatoes. So it's the largest trailer that you can possibly use to deliver. That way you can do it all in one load. Um, even if you have a small tipper, like if you can't afford a semi-truck like I have up there, all you can afford is like a, a little tipper that may be your best way to do it because the little tipper you can keep dropping stuff off at the train depot and then fill the train up the train cars up and then take those train cars um and uh take them to the mill and sell them that way or whatever the train the train station and we'll we'll go over that here i'll show you how to do that um, that may be your best bet if you have a semi truck and you can get all the potatoes in one load then just use the semi truck but once again, the goal is to get the most dollar per potato that you can overall. So I need to uncover this. We're going to put this here. So let's go ahead and uh, unload this so you guys can see how that's done. So there is a pipe out with this uh, pipe out button. If you look here on the menu, O on my keyboard is what does the pipe out. So I'm going to go ahead and do pipe out. You can see that raises up the pipe. And we can now get it over the top of the tipper. And you can also use your joystick to flatten this part out so that it's nice and flat over the over the truck. If you have something tall like this, <laughs> we are like way at the limit. It looks like it's dumping out, but it's not. So <laughs> that's <laughs> this tipper's just barely big enough, or uh, this hopper's just barely tall enough to get this into the truck. <laughs> so this guy's full. Let's go ahead and see how he unloads. Um, and we're going to pull forward here and back our way in. Now, this is should already be all out. I don't think yet there, this does not allow us any controls at all, the, the joystick. So we're just hopefully this will go high enough. I know we were catching on it before. Um, we should still be able to get it just over the top of this trailer, though. Yep, there we go. It's just over. And it'll unload into the trailer. And we'll go ahead and finish up this field. So you've seen both of the operations. You've seen how to save the seed for the next time around. We'll go over a little bit of field prep here in this video too, just because we need to kind of do that um, to keep the video all together for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy back up and working. And let's see, back up here. We're going to go ahead and hire a worker. And I'm going to jump out and let that guy do his work. So we'll catch up with you once this field is done. We'll take a look at how to... Um, get the field turned around and all that other good stuff. So we'll see you in just a minute here. All right, so you can see this field has uh, given us a full yield of potatoes. We have an almost full truck load here. Let's jump in the truck and see how much we've got. Um, now, I was I realized after I did all this that I don't have plowing on and I don't I only have one state of, stage of fertilization in my settings. So we this is actually the full yield that this field will give us. So this field at its best gives us 51,000 313 liters of potatoes plus 3,000 more for the 3,000 that we dumped over on the side of the field for our cedar. So we have a, a very happy truck. Now, if we want to do plowing and fertilization properly, you can go into your menu. And I don't think I've showed this before in my tutorial, so we'll go over this. If you go into the game setting menu over here on the right, you can change the speed of your plant growth. We had it on fast for this tutorial, but. You can set it to normal or slow. I think if it's slow, it takes like three days to grow. Normal takes a, a day and a half or two days, and then fast takes like a, a day, maybe 24 hours. Um, it's all within like a day or two of each other. Plant withering means that the plants can die if you don't harvest them. So if you leave them for three or four stages of, of harvested, the, the plant will actually die and you can't harvest it. So make sure you, if you have this turned down, that you harvest it fast. Um, periodic plowing. If you want to plow your fields every three years or every three harvests, make sure this is on. But you can shut that off if you don't like plowing. So you can turn it off and it won't matter and it won't affect your field. But I keep it on for realism. Um, last but not least, you can have just one fertilizer state. If you, like So like how we planted and used the planter that had the fertilizer, that gave us the full yield of, of crop. Otherwise, you have to do it three times. And we talked about that a little bit in our 
noob guide mark too but you can actually adjust those settings if you don't want to mess around with it so that's where all of that information is um so we're gonna back out here and take a look at the truck so we're now once we have a full load of potatoes now since it all fit in our truck um we could just go deliver this because we're not going to affect the market price but i want to show you how to use the train so if you're using a tipper where you can't deliver it all at once or you're using a bigger field where this fills the truck up over and over again because once again what kills the market price is when you sell and you sell more and then you sell more each time you sell you make the market price go down to the point where they're almost worth nothing eventually and with potatoes you get so many of them that you really want to avoid crashing your market or you have to store them for like a week before the prices go back up or a little secret turn the game off and reload it save it and turn it off because <laughs> every time you reload it resets all the market prices uh, i just plowed that sign over we're going for realism here um this truck's a little bit unruly this is a very big rig uh, so let's go ahead and go to the train depot so you guys can see how that works um the train cars once again whereas this thing has like as being the biggest tipper that you can buy it has an 80,000 liter capacity or 60,000 liter maybe 60 I think yeah because we're at 50 and we're 80 we're 80 percent full so it's a 60,000 liter capacity on the biggest tipper that we can buy default in the game the train I believe holds up to 500,000 liters maybe or 300,000 something like that so we can put several truckloads of potatoes into a single train load and there's two or three different cars that can load potatoes on the train so you can very quickly sell off all your potatoes in one visit now Mike and I if you're into a glutton for punishment um, you can watch Mike and, and I play a stancha la pacha where we're doing sugar beets this truck is too tall for this garage that's great <laughs> uh, and we um, <laughs> oops planning that's right uh, we harvest a monster field of sugar beets and it took us like four train loads to sell all the sugar beets okay, now we did no we tornadoes. no tornadoes okay good we did make we have a bad storm going on right now we did make about four hundred thousand dollars in sales doing the train but we still had to make several train trips because there just were so many sugar beets that we we couldn't do it so i'm gonna, I'm gonna unload these here into the garage and they dump down in here and this works for any map that has a train that delivers to the mill. Now, how can you tell? Well, if I go into my menu and I look at my train, what you can see here is see the maple filled mill? There's a little train symbol next to it right there. That means that the train is what delivers to that location. You can't use a truck. You have to use a train. And you can see here right now, maple filled mill is actually the best price for potatoes. Usually... The potatoes, the sugar beets, and sugar cane have their best price at the mill. So there's sugar cane right there, 470, 325 over here. Sugar beets are, once again, the highest price here at the mill. So the best thing to do is to sell it here. That means the train services that mill. And so if you have certain maps have that, not all of them do, but certain maps do, that's going to be your best place to sell the potatoes, um, especially if you have a tipper where you have to like do several loads. So let's pull this guy off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and hop in the train. So we're going to take this train down to the mill. You run it just like any other piece of equipment, except for you can't steer it because obviously it's a train. Um, that sugar beet car and the grain car and this wood chip car can all take potatoes. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. You can load. The, if the only car that won't take the potatoes is the wood car. So they these all can be filled with potatoes. And that helps you to um, sell them faster and get them off the train in one piece. Now... We don't have enough to even fill up one train car, but you'll see the capacity here. So we're going to fill up that first wood chip car with potatoes. So I'm going to stop you pull under the spigot right there. It takes a long time to stop, so be ready. <laughs> and I'm going to press the load button and I'm going to pick what I want. I want to load. Where's my potatoes? 51,000 liters of potatoes. And it's filling up that first car. Once again, you can fill up all three cars with potatoes. So that will definitely help you um, get these sold faster. <laughs> so it's filling up. So with 50,000 liters, you can see we're at 42% full. That means that this car can hold about 110,000 liters 
It's probably true for each of these cars. So we could fill them all up and have a delivery of over 300,000 liters of potatoes. So you can do a pretty big field of potatoes and deliver them pretty much all at once. There'll be a, a little bit of a price discrepancy. I think the first 10 minutes after you sell a crop, the price decreases slowly. Then it plummets. So this way you can deliver them all in one load. Hopefully, unless you have a really huge field full of potatoes, then you might want to just save them. So then we pull, this is the Maple Field Mill. We're going to pull over that spot right there, and you'll see down in the bottom right-hand corner, a little dump symbol appears. We've gone over that before with the train. That's how you know you're over the trigger. So when you see down by the, the speedometer there to the very lower right, you'll see a little dump symbol. I'm going to back up so it goes away so you can see it happen. There, it disappeared. As I pull the car over this, this little dumping area, you'll see it reappear. Ta-da! And now we can dump it. So we're going to go ahead and dump that potato load. And you can see how much money we make. Just a drop in the bucket compared to how much money we have. But that was $26,000 worth of potatoes from that field. So that's all set. Now let's go back and finalize this. We need to prep the field again. So with the field in the condition that it's in, um, we need to probably plow and cultivate to get our best yield. I'm just going to cultivate because to save time. But I would, you know, at this point every third harvest you need to plow so if you haven't done it before it might be time to plow this field uh, but I'm just going to cultivate it and then we'll plant again so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to move this harvester off the field <laughs> I went all out and bought a whole bunch of equipment for the tutorial's sake and in real life you're going to be working a little harder than this most likely because who has a million just has a million dollars lying around to buy two potato harvesters right and the cedar and all that other stuff, plus the big tractors. You might, if you have a rich farm. All right, so we have the field cultivated, thanks to Big Bud, who's stuck on a pole over there. I just left him as is. We're slowly descending. There we go. Big Bud is returning to its normal state instead of flying off to the side. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use any kind of front loader will do. If you have a tractor with a shovel, that's fine. Or you could use um, like this, or if you want to use maybe a... Uh, a um, you know, a Kramer, one of the little Kramer telehandlers, or a full-size telehandler, or a giant wheel loader, whatever. Anything that's got a bucket, you can use it to reload this. Um, so we're going to just come over here, and this is all you do. You just scoop them off the ground. And we're going to fill up the cedar using the scooper. So that way we don't have to buy any seed. We still have to buy fertilizer, but the seed we have. So pretty sweet stuff. Oops, that didn't work. For some reason, I didn't scoop. That was really bizarre. Okay, so we're get around here and do some more scooping. You can ask Ryan Evelyn. All right, so we're going to scoop this up and Once again, any telehandler or scooper, any device with a bucket will work for this. So we're scooping up the potatoes off the ground and we just simply dump them in the back. And our cedar is ready to go. It's got the 3000 potatoes that it needs to plant this field because we already counted it, so we know how many potatoes it took. So once again, each field that you have that you're going to plant potatoes on, you, you probably should keep track so that you can make sure you store back at least that many potatoes for the next round of planting. And then we're going to go ahead and use this tractor to plant the fields again. And we've come full circle. So you guys have seen basically from planting to harvesting and back to planting again for the potatoes. And that is how it's done. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it entertaining and also helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments, and I will definitely try to help you guys out and figure out how to play. But uh, anyway, I know that um, there's this game can be pretty complicated. There's a lot to it. So this guide hopefully helped you figure out what you're doing as far as the potatoes go. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help, and we'll see you again in the next tutorial.